What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I found this booster power supply, knack extender thing, at the transfer station. Someone threw it away and um, I was like, I'll take it. Uh, so I just took it home, you can't beat free. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and see if it works. But first let's open it. So this takes a Cat45 EST key, because obviously it is an EST device. If we open it, you can see that it's not too complicated inside. I'll give a pretty dumbed down explanation of what this is used for. So let's suppose you have a large building uh, and you need a lot of notification appliances. That is fire alarm, uh, you know, horn strobes and things like that. Um, the main fire panel, let's suppose you have a main fire alarm panel can only provide so much power. Uh, so it has this particular one has four knacks. That's not enough to power like a massive building. So you're gonna need, um, a way to extend your knacks, which is exactly what a knack extender does. So you would get one of these, and then you'd wire the knack from your main fire panel um, to these terminals here, which is knack in. And as soon as the fire, as soon as the fire panel goes into alarm and starts sending power through the knack, um, it will trigger this entire thing, and then this will start to operate. So what this will do is give you additional notification appliance circuits. So this one gives you four extra knacks. Um, and obviously this is powered on its own. It's not powered by the fire panel. This wires into the building's electrical system on its own. Uh, so basically what this will do is exactly what the name says. It extends your NACs. It gives you more power uh, so you can have more devices throughout the building. Um, a really large building will definitely have several of these, but in terms of just simplicity, um, that's basically what this does. It's triggered by the fire panel. It's not a part of the fire panel. It's just triggered by the fire panel. It's a self-powered device. And when the fire panel is activated, um, this thing will activate and send power to the notification appliances that are connected to this. I'm not going to connect this to a panel right now or my building's electrical system. So what I just did is I hooked this up to a regular three-prong cord, and then I'm going to wire a few simple things up to this. I've gone ahead and just wired it up very simply. I'll go ahead and just briefly explain what I did. So obviously for mains power, this is usually gonna wire into um, your building's electrical. It's powered by 120 volts. What I did is I just wired that to a cord and it's plugged into a wall outlet. Um, so for my fire panel trigger, this usually would be connected to your notification appliance circuit. So when the fire panel activates and you know sends power through um, the alarm circuit, this will activate. However, what I did is I just hooked a 24 volt transformer on a switch. Um, so when I flip the switch, that will simulate a panel going into alarm and then sending 24 volts through the trigger. And then of course I've hooked, you know, three different devices up to the various NACs. Um, so I chose EST devices because, you know, that's really what this is designed for. Um, you know, Genesis notification appliances. These will automatically sync. I don't think this has any sync protocols for like Wheelock or something because it is an EST panel. Um, but EST devices have that really nice feature where when they activate, you don't need a sync module. They'll just automatically flash and sync. So I'm gonna go ahead and trigger the fire alarm. So let's suppose the panel goes into alarm. It's kind of hard to see. They are all flashing in sync. But basically, that's what that would do. I'm pretty sure each of these knacks is able to handle a decent amount of load. Probably just as much as a fire panel knack. Because this, you know, obviously is not relying on the power supply of the fire panel. Go ahead and silence the panel. So when you silence the fire alarm panel, then this will automatically stop. You don't have to reset this or anything. It's basically just a triggerable 24 volt power supply. And of course, it's going to do its own thing. But the fire panel has its own power supply. This one is right here. And you can see that this is only capable of doing so much. It's only capable of providing power to so many fire alarm devices. So if you overload this thing, it's not going to work right. Um, there are formulas and things like that that you can use. Um, but basically, since this has its own power supply and transformer and things like that, and it's wired to the building power on its own, this can provide power for you know a number of different devices uh, without hampering the effectiveness of your main fire panel. Hopefully that is a somewhat okay explanation of how a fire alarm booster panel works. Now I'm gonna go a little crazier and we're gonna wire up a ton of other devices to this. 
I added a pull station to the trigger. All this does is basically switch the 24 volts. Along with that, I added a few devices, a couple speaker strobes. Um, you know, perhaps you could have a partially uh, speaker strobed building. Obviously, this won't control the speakers, um, but it'll provide power for the strobes. So let's go ahead and pull it. This is going to be loud. These should all sync. There you go they do all sync it's really cool um basically that's what a booster panel does a few other things you're technically supposed to actually have a resistor on the ends of these knacks um just like any other knack so that way this is supervised if you don't have a resistor i don't have a resistor as you can see there's going to be a trouble obviously if there's a trouble um that will cause the main panel to go into trouble because you're supposed to uh wire the relay that way there is a trouble relay here. There's some other relay. I'm not sure what that is, but you definitely have a trouble relay here. So you would wire this in a way that when this trouble relay clicks, the fire panel goes into trouble. So that way you know that something's wrong with this booster panel. Um, you also would have a battery here, which obviously makes sense because if the main fire panel has a battery, um, this should also have a battery. So that way in the event of a power failure, this still provides power for the notification appliances. Um, not really sure if there's a whole lot else to say. There's some dip switches here for various selections. You can see it's a bunch of stuff here. These are the trouble lights. So you can see there's ground. So there's a ground fault trouble, then that's bad. There's NAC one, two, three, four. These are trouble lights for the various NACs. I have all four of them on as well as a battery trouble because there's obviously no battery. Um, but that's all right. Who cares? This is just a demonstration. But yeah, hopefully you guys learned something, or maybe you didn't, because I'm a horrible explainer. Uh, here's the dip switch selections. You can see there's a few coding options. There's continuous, temporal, California. Actually, before I end the video, I'm curious if this puts out filtered DC or not. So I'm going to connect a mechanical for horn uh, and then have it do, like, temporal or something. So yeah, and pull it. This is going to be loud. These should all sync. All right, I don't know what this is going to do. Hopefully nothing blows up, but let's see. Yeah, that does sound kind of like uh, FWR. That's a shame. So this definitely can't be used to power anything um, like a mechanical horn. Well, it could be technically from a code compliance standpoint, but it would just sound horrific. Um, I know some people say that you can damage your stuff by doing that i'm not entirely sure if that's true um i wouldn't be surprised if it was true because i have a ton of stuff that is sort of raspy um i'm supposing they were used on systems with fwr uh power instead of filter dc which could be why or they're just like that but who knows well we'll see Well, that's that. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, subscribe. Um, yeah, hopefully you did learn something, like I said. That's that. I'm not even sure if this thing has ever been used. None of the knockouts are punched out, so there's no way someone could have installed this in a building without punching out knockouts. Um, so I guess this is just old stock and someone didn't want it, so they just left it at the um, transfer station. I was like, I'll take it. Not sure what these are for. I think there's modules that could go there interesting well that's that have a good day